Bill. Hello, Mr. Schwanson student. This is Herr Einstein here. I see you're having problems with this math equation here for gravity. Well, I tell you, so that this is so difficult. So I don't know how. No, I will have Mr. Schwanson do it now. Well, thank you, Mr. Einstein. Here we'll get back to doing these gravity problems. Numbers 11 through 14 on your sheet. And the students should all remember that we always start with this equation that we talked about in the previous videos. Gravitational constant times the mass 1 times mass 2 divided by the distance squared between the objects represented by R is equal to the force of gravity on those objects. And that G is always this wonderful number that we kind of derived in class. All right, well, my notes here for number 11, say, see the other sheet because they're straightforward examples. So in number 11, you are working the problem straightforward uh, without having to isolate any variables. The force in all the data is given on the front sheet. You're given the object's uh, mass, so the force exerted on that object by the sun would be, so the object's on the earth, so you know the distance is the distance between the sun and the earth, the mass of the object, divided, oh, I'm sorry, the mass of the sun, this is the distance to the sun squared, and you get this small number, 0 0.472 newtons, when you plug in the value of g. And the force exerted on it by the moon, same thing, you use the earth to the moon distance, the mass of the moon, and you get an even smaller number. So even though it's closer to the object, the moon is closer than the sun is, the sun is so much more massive, you get a number, oh, a hundred or so times as much as, or from the sun, that's a hundred or times more than the force from the moon. And then the force on the earth, is just working it straightforward like you did on problem number one, and you get 784 newtons. <coughs> so, and that's a bigger number because it's closer to the Earth, and the Earth is uh, more massive than the moon. All right, moving on to number two, or I'm sorry, number 12. I said number 12 is just the twist on number three. You need to find the mass of the person first in order to work it. And that person weighs 882 newtons on Earth's surface. So applying our equation, we always start with isolating for the mass of the person. We find, and the force was 882 newtons that was given in the problem. So the mass of that person would be the force times the radius squared of the Earth divided by the gravitational constant and divided by the mass of the Earth. And when you plug in the numbers, like on the sheet, so this is the sheet, when you plug in the numbers, you end up with 90 kilograms. Of course, you have to put the value of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th um, newton meter squared per kilogram squared to get that 90 kilograms. So once we have this, again, this really helps if you um, draw a picture so now that we know the mass of the person, and this picture is not to scale, it's like the first one. The, first, the person is some distance above the Earth's surface. So we need to solve for that distance, rearranging the equation, isolating for R squared. We get the R squared is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the person times the mass of the Earth divided by the force, which has dropped to 800 newtons, as it told you in the problem. So the thing to keep in mind there is we are solving for this distance with this equation, distance between the center of the Earth and the person to exert that force due to gravity on it. So back to the other sheet that is posted on my web page. We just run through the equation. R squared is equal to this, plugging in all the numbers, including the value of G here you come up with 4.487 times 10 to the 13th meters squared. So the square root to find R is the square root of that number. The square root of meters squared is meters, and you get a value of 6.699 times 10 to the 6 meters as being 
this distance from the center of the Earth to where the person is some altitude above the Earth. So then to find the altitude, you take that distance and subtract the radius of the Earth, and you end up with 3.19 times 10 to the fifth meters. Not too bad, I don't think. All right. Now for number 13, where you need to calculate Saturn's radius. Yes, you could look it up on Dr. Google, but that's no fun. So get this out of here. So Saturn's radius, again, we start with the same equation we always start with, which is written here, putting the mass of Saturn, then the mass 2, which would be the 50 kilogram mass. Solving that equation for the radius squared gives you this, so isolating for radius squared like we did on earlier problems. So radius squared then would be equal, now I'm plugging in the numbers for you here on this one, the gravitational constant times the mass of Saturn, which was given on the sheet, times the 50 kilograms that was given in the problem, um, divided by the force of gravity that was also given in the problem. So you can see here that our kilogram squared cancels out in the denominator because you got kilogram times kilogram or kilogram squared up here. And doing the next step, those numbers come out to this number in newtons, meters squared divided by this many newtons. So our newtons will cancel out and you get that the R squared is equal to this many meters squared. So taking the square root of that, you get 5.85 times 10 to the seventh meters as the radius of Saturn. I probably should have put radius of Saturn in here, S. Voila. <clears throat> Moving on to number 14. I think I better start another video for this. What do you think, Mr. Einstein? Oh, yeah, Herr Einstein says you're running out of time, seven minutes already. You should make another video and stop talking so long. Yeah.